We're in our secret shed at the bottom of the garden. Yes. I'm fitting a new horn to our bus. Listen. Great, isn't it? But I haven't quite got it fixed on yet. Frank? Yes? I've been looking through the shed window into the garden, and I think I can see Parsnip. He's hiding under a bush. Why would Parsnip be hiding under a bush? I don't know. Shall we go and see if we can find out? You do that. I'll finish fixing the horn. All right. We'll have to be very quiet. Come on. We're nearly up to the bush. Hello, Parsnip. Meow! Don't run. Let me pick you up. There now. Let's smooth Parsnip. Very gently. He likes that. Parsnip, don't struggle so. I wonder what can be the matter. That's better. Why don't you come into the shed to see Frank? Meow! Meow! Parsnip, honestly, there's nothing to frighten you. Meow! Do you know what's frightened him? <coughs> oh, I see. He's afraid of the horn. Parsnip, it's all right, it's only Frank. Just think, he was imagining all sorts of things. Do you do that sometimes? If you're frightened, you imagine and imagine until everything seems much worse. The best thing to do is to find out what's really going on, isn't it? Providing you're sensible and don't do it on your own. The horn got stuck for a minute, but it's OK now. Oh, good. Let's go for a ride to cheer Parsnip up. He was frightened. Well, I put him down and he's run straight to jump into the bus. Let's follow him. Up we get. Can I drive today? Because I am in the driving seat already. And I know where we'll go. We'll need our wellies. Oh, there are some wellies in the bus. Can you find a pair? Here are mine. I'm pulling them on. There. I'll put mine on before we get out. I'd better not drive in them. No. Are you ready? Choose a seat. That's it. Is the story box in, Sarah? Yes, it's at the back. Good. Close the door. I'll switch on. Hold tight. Off we go. Right, let's sing as we drive along. We like riding in our secret bus. Won't you come along and ride with us? Yes, it may have squeaks and dents and rust. But come and join us, please, you really must. As we go, we laugh and sing. The horn goes and the bell goes. It's great to have you with us in our bus. We're so pleased you've come along with us. We've got the story box and past it too. <laughs> and prayers and games and fun to share with you. The road is getting steeper, but the bus can manage it. And it's getting cold. Look, snow. Oh, it's a good thing the road's been cleared. I came here the other day. There's a good place to park just there. What a lovely view. Mountains covered with snow. That's why we needed our wellies. I'll oh, get mine on. Now then, let's get out. Meow. All right, Parsnip. You stay here. Parsnip hasn't got any wellies to keep his feet warm and dry. We won't be long, Parsnip. I'll open the door. Jump down. Whoops! It's a bit slippery. Mind you don't go too near the edge of the mountain. Oh, we're quite safe here. Let's make a snowball. Scoop up some snow, press it into a ball and... Throw! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one hit me. Oh, but it didn't really hurt. Let's make another snowball. Scoop up the snow, press it into a ball, and throw! Oh, I was afraid that one was going to hit me. You know, you can be a little bit afraid, like not wanting a snowball to hit you. Or you can be very, very afraid, like someone in today's story. Oh, let's get back into the bus. 
in the warm and have the story now. Good idea. Come on, everyone. Climb up. Hello again, Parsnip. I'll close the door. Ah, we're all settled. Let's open the story box. The Polar Bear's Outing Once there was a polar bear called Euston. The polar bears spent most of their time indoors in the winter, snuggled up warmly in the caves where they lived. But on sunny days they loved to go out and play. One sunny winter morning, Euston was watching the snowflakes falling through the sunlight. He felt excited. Mum, he said, please can we go out? Euston, said Mum, making up her mind. We'll go to Windy Ice Hill. You'll be able to have a really good time there. Yippee! cried Euston, hopping up and down. He and Mum set out together. It wasn't very far, and when Mum and Euston came over the top of the hill, they could just make out crowds of small polar bears playing in the snow. Some were sliding down the hill, some were throwing snowballs, some were making snow bears, some mums and dads were playing too. Others chatted to each other and watched their cubs. Can I have a slide, mum? asked Euston. Of course, smiled mum. Whee! cried Euston as he slid down the hill. He landed with a plop on the soft snow at the bottom. Then he stood up and looked for mum. There she was, looking down at him, waving. He could just see her. Euston grinned and waved and started to climb back up. He reached the top. Then, whee! He went down to the bottom. Up he climbed and whee! He went down again. He stood up and looked for Mum. He couldn't see her. He was sure she wasn't standing where she had been. He strained his eyes to look harder, but he still couldn't see her. Euston's legs began to shake. He started to climb back up the hill. Other bears went whizzing down the hill past him. But Euston kept climbing up and up. He still couldn't see Mum. There were so many other bears. Perhaps Mum had gone home and left him. And he didn't think he knew the way home by himself. His legs shook more than ever. He climbed a bit further. He still couldn't see Mum. Euston put his head in his paws and started to cry. And then he heard, Euston! Euston looked up, and there was Mum, hurrying towards him. Mum! he sobbed. I thought you'd gone home without me. Mum picked him up and hugged him. You old silly! Of course I wouldn't do that. I'm white against the snow, and you can't always see me, that's all. Oh! <laughs> sniffed Euston. Mum put him down. Now you go and have another lovely game, she said. But Euston wouldn't. He just stood by his mum and held her fur. Oh, Euston, she said. Euston still wouldn't let go. So Mum bent down, scooped up some snow and pressed it into a ball. Whoosh! Mum threw her snowball. It hit a tree. Plop! Euston smiled and let go of Mum. Mum made another snowball. Whoosh! It hit the tree again. Plop! Euston bent down, scooped up some more snow, pressed it into a ball and whoosh! He threw a snowball at Mum. I see, laughed Mum. Quickly she made another snowball. No, giggled Euston, but whoosh, gently Mum threw the snowball at him. Plop, it hit his nose very softly. Then Mum and Euston threw snowballs at each other until they could hardly stand up for laughing. Oh, it's time to go home, said Mum at last. Euston took hold of her paw and held on tight. 
Happily, they went home together. I'm glad Euston was all right in the end. He'd been so frightened. Everyone's afraid sometimes, aren't they? I know I am. Sometimes you can't help it. Yes. That's when it's specially nice to remember God is always with us, taking care of us, whatever happens. Yes, that is nice. Ah, look at Parsnip! Silly puss! Parsnip's managed to squeeze out of the bus and he's trying to walk along a narrow path right on the edge of the mountainside. I suppose he's trying to keep his paws out of the snow. But Frank, he could fall. Let's open the door and call him quite softly so as not to startle him and make him slip over the edge. Will you help us call? Parsnip? Parsnip? parsnip. Come back, Parsnip! Oh, he's coming. Jump up, Parsnip. Oh, right on my lap. Walking on the edge like that was a very silly, dangerous thing to do, Parsnip. Weren't you frightened? Me! Well, you should have been. We were frightened for you. Sarah, perhaps it's a good thing we're frightened sometimes. It's all part of God's plan to keep us from doing really silly things. Yes. It's no use doing stupid things on purpose. But when we are afraid, it's nice to think how strong God is to protect us to take care of us. Let's talk to him about it. Yes. I'm going to shut my eyes while we talk to God. I'm going to keep mine open. Are you ready to talk to God? Father God. Father God. Thank you because you know when we are afraid. Thank you because you know when we are afraid. And thank you because you are strong and never stop caring about us. And thank you because you are strong and never stop caring about us. Amen. Amen. I've opened my eyes now. Oh, Parsnip's gone to sleep. It's time we took him home. I suppose it is. Hold tight. I'll switch on the engine. And off we go! Let's sing about God protecting us, taking care of us. When we're frightened, Lord, it helps to think of you. For we know you're always near us, and your love will see us through. When life's hard for us, and not an easy ride. Although we cannot see you, you are standing by our side. When we're frightened, Lord, it helps to think of you. For we know you're always near us, and your love will see us through. When we're getting scared, you always want to know. Help us tell you all about it, help our trust in you help to grow. Help us tell you all about it, help our trust in you to grow. Help us tell you all about it, help our trust in you to grow. We're nearly home now. Up to the shed and stop. Wake up, Parsnip! Parsnip, you were frightened of the noise in the shed, weren't you? Meow! We knew he was, didn't we? I wonder why he wouldn't say. It's always better to say when you're frightened. Then people can start helping you. Perhaps Parsnip was worried we'd laugh at him. But we wouldn't ever laugh at people because they are afraid of something. No, it would be very unkind. And it wouldn't help at all either. Meow! Meow! Parsnip wants to get out. I don't know why we're all sitting here. Let's open the door. And jump down. Off you go, Parsnip. And off we go as well. Yes. Goodbye. Until next time. Bye. 
I remember being very frightened when I was small and got lost in a big shop. Oh, that is frightening. I wonder what the children have been frightened of. I hope they've told someone. I always find it helpful to tell someone, don't you?